This is Southern Cross News with Rachel Williams. Tasmania police say a shooting in Glenorchy this afternoon was the event of a failed love triangle. It's understood a sawn-off shotgun was shot out of this vehicle to another and stemmed from a feud between two families known to police. The incident, which started just after 11 o'clock, began on Springfield Avenue, carried along Windsor Street and ended in the Hungry Jacks car park. At this stage, the initial indications are this feud relates to a female. The initial in indications are that um, the female has uh, a discontinued relationship uh, with one member of the family and commenced with a uh, male person for a number of another family. No one was injured and those involved are yet to come forward. Police have labelled the event as stupid and reckless. Investigations are continuing and anyone with information is urged to contact Crime Stoppers. A man who launched a vicious and prolonged attack on his Lutana housemate has been sentenced to at least two years in jail. Justice Michael Brett said John Anthony Curtis may have been under the influence of drugs and mistakenly believed his friend stole his wallet, but it doesn't excuse the brutal violence. Inside this Lutana house is where John Anthony Curtis bashed his housemate last November. Justice Brett described it as a vicious and prolonged attack, punching, strangling, dragging the victim by the hair and hitting him with a metal object likely to be a shovel. The victim, Troy Francis Dyrene, took to the stand saying he had no recollection of a violent incident involving Curtis and said they're friends. That contradicted a previous statement given to police, saying Curtis started assaulting him because he was convinced he'd stolen his wallet. Today, Justice Brett said it's clear the jury believed the earlier statement and thought the victim lied in his testimony. Curtis was found guilty of assault and causing bodily harm. In sentencing, the judge said you may have been under the influence of methamphetamine, which explains your behaviour, but doesn't excuse it. It was a terrible way to treat anybody, let alone someone who was your friend. Justice Brett said the offender's failure to seek assistance for the victim is a factor in sentencing, ordering Curtis to serve four years jail. He'll be eligible for parole after serving half of that sentence. Michael Breen, Southern Cross News. A driver has escaped with minor injuries after his log truck jackknifed and rolled onto its side. Police say the driver was merging onto the Bass Highway when his trailer's rear wheels left the road. It's been a bit unlucky really. He's just misjudged his position on the road. It looks like the rear wheels of the trailer's just started to slide off the road and down a bit of a bank, which then just pulled the truck over to its, onto its side. The road was closed for several hours while the log and truck were cleared. The damage bill is still unknown. A man in his 40s has been found dead by a family member after a trail bike crash near Deloraine late this afternoon. Emergency services were called to the property just after four o'clock. Police are investigating the cause of the crash and a report is being prepared for the coroner. Tasmanian patient health outcomes are increasingly being put at risk due to overcrowded emergency departments and a lack of local decision making, according to a new interim report. The Legislative Council's inquiry into acute health services released its key findings today. The same day, new elective surgery waiting time results were also revealed. When it comes to elective surgery, the Health Minister claims Tasmanians are being operated on sooner. We've seen the biggest improvement in elective surgery performance in the country. Tasmania per capita is performing more surgeries than any other state or territory. But according to one health analyst, the latest waiting time report by the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare doesn't paint a good picture. But it's disgusting data. What's most concerning to me is, of course, what's happening at the Royal Hobart Hospital, which is by far the worst performing of all 30 major public hospitals in this country. 27% of patients who were told they needed surgery within 30 days at the Royal Hobart last financial year weren't operated on within the recommended time. We're going to continue our targets here, we're going to increase our performance and we're going to see 90% of people being treated within the doctor's recommended time. 
and the pressure on the health minister is set to keep building. A new interim report by the Upper House Inquiry into Acute Health Services finding overcrowding in emergency is putting patients at risk. Leadership issues are affecting care. The delivery of maternity services in the North West is fragmented. There is a lack of some mental health services and significant overtime and locum costs are putting pressure on the budget. The reason that um, the overtime and double shifts occur is because there aren't enough baseline staffing um, or nurses and midwives to support safe patient care and that is why that uh, nurses and midwives will undertake double shifts and overtime to ensure that uh, safe patient care occurs. We need more everything. We need more beds, we need more surgeons, more nurses, more cooks and cleaners. The government needs to spend money on health rather than on simply propping up its balance sheet. The government maintains it's spending a record amount on health and says it's already addressing report findings. We're opening every bed that's available in the LGH and staffing accordingly and in the south where we've seen particularly difficult bed pressures. The Legislative Council will release its full report and recommendations next year. Monika Dadsen at Southern Cross News. Advocacy groups like the Council of the Ageing and the Youth Network of Tasmania will have secure funding for the next four years under an election commitment promised by the state Liberals. The party says if it wins majority at the next election due in March, it will provide increased funding to seven peak bodies. So over the forward estimates, they will receive 110000 plus indexation every year. This will provide them with the certainty they need for operational funding. The funding itself is welcomed and will enable us to continue the important work that we do in helping carers uh, raise their voice and also raise the profile that carers have in our community. Most advocacy groups currently receive around $90,000 each year. The future of the Royal Hobart Show hangs in the balance following revelations the Royal Launceston Show is being shelved due to financial problems. Organisers of the Hobart Show expect to face higher running costs and fewer entertainment options down the track. It's been part of Launceston's fabric for 144 years. But the Royal Launceston show won't go on next year. A toxic mix of plummeting public interest and mounting debt, enough to convince the local council to cut its losses. The debt's 107000 plus we used to give grants to them as well for each show that was on. The axing comes just two months after the Devonport show collapsed and the dominoes could keep falling, with the Royal Hobart show now facing a bigger financial burden. It's going to make it harder for us. Um, we share a lot of stuff, we share infrastructure, we share staff. Scott Gadd says the major shows need each other to attract rides and showbag stalls from the mainland. And I predict that we're going to see a massive falling off of those offerings. The final nail in Launceston's coffin came when Council voted down a plan to buy back its own lease at Inveresk. It would have given the event a vital cash injection. But the show has gone down a similar path before, when organisers sold their original site at the Elfin Showgrounds. They sold that because they were in financial difficulties some 20 years ago. Now they're in that same position again. It means they've dwindled down all those reserves that they've had and now got into to debt again. What's hurt us is basically the changing of the school terms, the show now falls in school holidays and since that happened and that we've had a huge drop off. The state government says the show public holiday will stay, although it may shift to another date. Tom Johnson, Southern Cross News. Crowds are starting to file into Blunston Arena this evening for the Hobart Hurricanes opening clash of the Big Bash League. Anticipation is building as the Canes take on series favourites, the Melbourne Renegades. Our reporter Jacqueline Robson joins us now live from Bell Reef. Good evening, Jack. What's the feeling like down there? Well, Rachel, it's absolutely buzzing. People have been lining up to get through the gates since 5.30 this afternoon. Now, it will be a packed night. Ticket sales have been soaring and we could even see a sellout crowd as many people are expected to buy their tickets at the gate. Now, we spoke to some Hurricanes fans earlier to ask them how the team will go up against the star-studded Renegades. What makes you so confident? Uh, hitting sixes all the time. And who are the star players? Um, yeah, George Bailey. 
So there you have it. The fans are confident, but whether the team will get it over the line will uh, it remains to be seen. We'll bring you the full wrap up in tomorrow night's bulletin, Rachel. Oh, fingers crossed for them. Thank you so much for that, Jack. Look forward to it. The Hobart waterfront is being transformed as workers and stallholders set up for the taste of Tasmania. Organisers are promising a revamped festival with plenty of surprises on the way. Rolling out the green carpet in what might be a theme for this year's Taste Festival. Organisers are promising a revamped event on Hobart's waterfront, including a dramatic entrance that's alive. It is definitely a sign of change. This is going to be the most amazing taste. I promise you nothing will look the same. This is going to be a world-class taste. Every single element of this taste has been under review. This year's festival will see more effort put into theming different areas, like nautical on the waterside. Uh, we've got a lot of change happening and, um, you know, I think as, as the Lord Mayor has said, it's been a tired event. So what we've done is inject a lot of love and a lot of heart and soul into the taste this year. But there's plenty to do before the doors open. Stall holders are frantically preparing for the event. We would really hope to sell over a tonne of cheese in seven days. In various forms of cooking through fondue to cheese boards to our Ashgro famous cheese curds which are making an appearance at tastes for the first time. The taste is a chance for producers to showcase their offerings, even if it is tough work. The effort, it's a marathon of to the third uh, on finishing, but it's always worth it and it's an incredible showcase for Tasmanian food and wine producers. In total, there will be 76 stall holders with more food on offer. Certainly we have a lot of alcohol producers in Tasmania who want to get into the taste, but we have got more food than alcohol. We've made a deliberate choice to go that way because we did hear the public's concerns. The public will be the ultimate judges when the taste opens next Thursday. Michael Green, Southern Cross News. Last minute Christmas shoppers have been treated to a special nativity scene to help spread the traditional message of the festive season. The two day event allows people to reflect and say a prayer for their loved ones during the busy Christmas period. Hopefully this little island to stop and think well this is, this is why we're doing it, this is what it's all about and I know sometimes people just stood there for a while and looked and said yes this is really what Christmas is about. Carolers from a variety of different communities will also be spreading Christmas cheer. Tasmania is a step closer to finding a motor neuron disease cure, with thousands raised for the cause. Today, Fight MND were handed a cheque for $114,000. All the money raised came from the MND Gala Ball and the Big Freeze earlier this year. The Freezing for MND committee have so far raised $215,000 since they formed 18 months ago. Cats from struggling Tasmanian families will have a full belly this Christmas thanks to charities partnering up to donate pet food. Ten Lives Cat Centre and Food Bank say animals can be the ones left out during Christmas time, an issue they're trying to solve. With many families struggling this Christmas, a bill to feed pets such as tiny mistletoe can break the bank. 30% of uh, all the cats and kittens that come into us are surrendered into our care by their owner. And uh, one of the key reasons that they, uh, they do that is uh, the expense, uh, particularly at this time of year. Ten Lives Cat Centre and Food Bank pairing up to give this donated pet food to families in need. It's a worrying uh, time for us at the same time that uh, people are struggling and uh, people that you don't expect to be struggling uh, need support. All food was donated by members of the Tasmanian community and will be distributed over the coming days. To those families that have got pets that are struggling to feed themselves, they've got an ability now to feed their pets and into, the, into January, when January will be a hard time for those people that have actually bought presents and wanting to support their families at Christmas time. Ten Lives also taking the opportunity to remind people thinking of giving a pet as a gift this Christmas to consider it as a long-term commitment. A cat or a kitten into your family is a fantastic thing which we really encourage but it is a 20 year plus commitment and there are expenses that go along with that joy. Louise Hedger, Southern Cross News.
Now a look at business and finance with thanks to Tazplan, your local super fund. The share market has closed lower, has selling in the financial, healthcare and telco sectors more than offset gains by energy producers, miners and retailers. The ASX 200 index has dropped by 15.2 points. And a short time ago, the Australian dollar was trading at 76.55 US cents and 109.35 New Zealand cents. Good evening, Hobart 23 today, Launceston, Burnie and Devonport all on 21. 25 was the top at St Helens and Fingal as temperatures sat within a degree or two of average. Cressy 24, Friendly Beaches and Campania 23, Wynyard Grove and Bushy Park 21, Flinders Island 20, while King Island, Lowhead and Strawn all reached 19 degrees. A frontal cloud band with thunderstorms is affecting New South Wales and Western Queensland. There's more thunder cloud over the Gulf of Carpentaria, middle level cloud over Central Northern Territory tree in the Kimberley. Closer in, some low level cloud over the west, south and Bass Strait Islands, some patchy high cloud over the top. Tomorrow the cold front moves slowly east as the high becomes established over the Tasman Sea. A weak high pressure ridge is over eastern Queensland while a lot of the country is under the influence of a broad trough of low pressure. Now winds mostly northwesterly at 15 to 25 knots but reaching 30 knots over the southwest in the afternoon swells to 4 metres in western and southern waters. Strong wind warning for waters between South East Cape and Low Rocky Point is the only warning. Partly cloudy for Hobart tomorrow, 15 overnight, 24 the top, 23 for Hewanville, a high of 26 for Campania. Launceston, a possible afternoon shower, but fine for most of the day, 23, 21 for Devonport and Georgetown with a shower or two as well. Burnie, a shower or two, 21, 21 for Strawn, Wynyard, 21 as well, with a little bit wet weather there. And for the east, St Helens, partly cloudy, 24, 25 for Swansea, Port Arthur, 24 degrees. UV extreme, 12 for Launceston, with a rating of 11 for the rest of the state. On Saturday, a few showers extending across Tasmania from the west. Showers to start Sunday before contracting to the west and far south in the afternoon. And on Christmas Day, fine apart from a shower over the west and far south. West to south westerly winds becoming light in the afternoon. Partly cloudy but fine weather tomorrow for Perth, Melbourne and Canberra. A sunny 28 degrees in Melbourne tomorrow. And a morning shower for Sydney and a possible shower for Brisbane. And partly cloudy conditions here, Hobart 20, Launceston 19, Devonport 18, Rach. Thanks for that, Murph. That's your news for now. Good night.